nearing the end of the year, 30th of the 10th, 2.16. Uh, let's just turn in our Bibles this morning to uh, Acts, just to start off with. And um, I want to enlarge upon something there. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Just want to enlarge upon something there we've been reading about in the last few weeks. Acts 3 and the verses 16. Here we are today, Paradise Now Church Sunday Meet. Assembly Day. First day of the week. Acts 3.16 and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know yes the faith which comes through him has giving, given him this perfect soundness in the presence of your perfect soundness always associated with the Lord. The Lord provides that perfect soundness. Sanity. I know. I, I was insane. The way I lived. And when I reflect on my life. Going back. It was insanity. Brother Shane. And other drug addicts, they live an insane life. Alcoholics live an insane life. And by faith in his name, by, by trusting in, in Jesus, we can have perfect sanity, even the sanity of the Saviour. And he gives us the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Right? You can't do any better than that in a world of hatred, in, in, in a world of weakness and insanity. The Lord's going to give us the love to forgive. And the power to forgive those who've done us terribly wrong. Jesus was done a terrible wrong. But he wants to forgive. We've done God, I've done God a terrible wrong for the first 30 years of my life. But he gave me that opportunity to repent. And turn from the darkness, hey? Which is Acts 3, 26. To you first, to the Jews first, God having raised up the man Jesus. Remember, Jesus was God and man. Raised up his servant, the man Jesus. And sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your sin. Hey? Turning every... Taking us by the hand and saying, come on, we're going this way now. That is the blessing. That's what the Lamb came to do. He didn't come to make your flesh at home in a sinful world. A lot of people think that. Lord, come to make me more comfortable in my sin and in a sinful world. Oh, no, he never. As you walk closer with the Lord, day by day, you become more uncomfortable in the world and with the world. But the blessing is the comforter is leading you. We're not looking for comfort of the flesh and, and uh, a 
undeveloped areas of the Adamic thinking. We're not looking for comfort, we're looking to the Lord for the leading of the Comforter, the Holy Ghost. That is everything. Then we break into the supernatural. And even though this might be happening and that might be happening, even though we might have a thorn in the flesh, even though we might have a messenger of Satan buffeting us on a daily basis, hey, it's overridden by what Jesus done at the tree. All has been accomplished there. All has been, it is finished. Your challenges, everything, your obstacles, your your setbacks and hindrances, and and even your own uh, non-acceptance of yourself at times, unable to accept yourself. Oh, look at me! Don't look at you. Look at the Lord. And then when you look in the mirror, you say, "You gorgeous! Look at me." Where did you come from? Hello, my name's... Look at him. And remember, there's a day coming where the Lord's going to show you the heavenly you. You will look like you, but you, every feature will be just perfect. There'll be no blemish on your skin. There will be no pimples or boils on your nose. Your teeth will be like pearls. Not that you'll need them. You'll be just rejoicing forevermore. You will look heavenly and never age. Never ever age. You won't have to worry about oil of you land again. Or Nivea cream. Oh dear, oh dear. So, what's going on around us? Well, I heard that on the news, the um, Muslim, Indian Muslims, if they want to divorce their wife, all they have to do is look at the wife and say three times, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. And it's done and dusted. So uh, that's that's their law. No longer knock three times on the ceiling if you want me. <laughs> Twice on the pipe if the answer is no. No. I divorce you. I divorce you. I divorce you. See, uh, is the taxi here? Yes. How ridiculous! Right? Totally. Uh, Contrary to the way of God, isn't it? The way of our Lord. The Lord knows how to hold things together. And yeah, one of those two, brother, for... The Lord knows how to hold it all together. I'm telling you, he can hold it all together. you got a crisis. you got issues. I'm sure you have. i got my own. you got your troubles, i got mine. Da, 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 da. You know that I've been trying to say today. Da, 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 da. You got your troubles, I got mine. Whatever the issue, the Lord has it in rhymes. He 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 can sort it. He done it all in six days and then sat down and rested on the sermon. He can sort your issues. He knows everything. He's omniscient. So, Channel 9 television, there's a new show on Channel 9. I like to keep up with their rubbish. And uh, how the rich can live longer. The rich people live longer. But you have to be rich and you live longer. 
Well, it's a no-brainer, isn't it? It's ignorance that the rich man died before Lazarus. The rich man died before Lazarus and he went to hell. He ain't going to live no longer. So, rich and poor, black and white, great and small will die when the Lord says so. Let's turn in our Bibles to James. You got your troubles, I got mine. Tomorrow has more troubles. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, it's a fight. It's a, you know, you're dodging and weaving. Bang, bang. Whoa. Yeah. You know, life is a, is a, is a real venture. Adventure. James chapter 4, verse 13. Come now, you who say tomorrow or today, we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy and sell and make a profit. James 4, 14. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapour that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. James 4, 15. Instead you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we shall live and do this or that. If the Lord wills. Not if you eat certain food and you do this and you do that. What's being said there is that we must put Jesus first. That he may do the miracle. That he may fulfill the perfect timing of everything in our life. When we put Jesus first and make him Lord everything will happen as he has planned it to happen he has set the boundaries of all men and women he has determined the boundaries he, he determines what goes down at the end of the day so we're not bogged down with death we're not bogged down with Oh, what if this happens? What if a bomb goes off in, in the bus centre, in the train station? What if a bomb explodes? Sweet, get the brochures out and say, Hey, don't you think it's time? You turn to Jesus, who gives life, breath and all things. That's what I'd do. If a bomb went off where I was standing in the supermarket... I'd start distributing the literature there and then, perfect timing. And I'd start saying, I think it might be time to repent and get right with your maker. Because we don't know what's coming around the corner tomorrow. The earth might open up and swallow everyone. It might very well be just a, a, another, uh, another um, Pacific Rim. Hello. If you've ever seen that movie, Pacific Rim, monsters just devouring the earth and tearing things to pieces and walking through cities and crushing everything. I mean, that would be uh, like a preschool birthday party compared to the great tribulation that's coming to the earth. Just a preschool birthday party. If you ever had opportunity to see a, a bit of the Pacific Rim moving. I don't look for movies. Sometimes if I sit down and I turn on the TV, there's some sort of movie there. There's no cursing and swearing, immorality. I watch it for a little and glean what I can out of it for the glory of the Lord. But I'm not bogged down in movies. I don't want to go and see anything. I don't need to see anything. I have it all in Him. I've got Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Angels and brethren in the Word of God. I've got it all. And everyone said Amen. Eh? So, no, the rich don't live longer than the poor and the poor don't live longer than the rich. And the black don't live longer than the white. 
It's half the time it's not living, it's surviving, isn't it? Hey, it's just surviving, just struggling on day to day. I'm happy to go now, you know, where I'm not a burden to anyone and I'm not, I'm not walking around decrepit and all those things that go with the worn out vehicle, all the parts starting to file. You know what I mean? Don't have to bother about that in the Lord. They want to say, well, you need this and that and $500,000 or you'll die. I say, oh, pull the pin, please. <laughs> Do what you want. I mean, no, no, I can tell you now, Joe. Do what you want. Why do the government advertise day and night on TV, national TV, about ancestry and family roots? And go to Ancestry.com. Why do you think they promote that daily, day and night? It's all part of the darkness, isn't it? It's all part of holding people back in their ancestral sin and a ancestral pride. It's all part of blinding. It's all the, 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 the blinding light of Lucifer, the God of this world. Holding people back in genealogies and wives' tales and, and vain and profane babble of men and women. Philosophies, useless philosophies and useless wranglings of educated fools, men and women, forsake it and shake it off and tell as many people as you can, don't even go there, don't even think that you could glean any goodness from your past or ancestry because it was all birthed in sin. The only ancestry we should be proud of and culture and tradition is the Christ himself. And everybody agreed. Well, nearly everybody. Well, a few did agree. No, I agree with Jesus. I'm a yay and amen man. Whatever Jesus says, that's it. Yesterday I was getting a couple of things down at the shop. And there was a young man there had a little table there and he was trying to get people to support the needy or wherever they were. And uh, I said to the young man, I said, well, I'd like to support you, you know, at the moment. I noticed you've got a Bible there on the table. He says, isn't it beautiful? Would have been about oh, probably five to six inches long, about three to four inches thick and about probably four inches wide, black leather, gold leafing, and all the sections marked out, two string cords in it, really nice little piece to look at. And I picked the Bible up and I looked at the spine and I looked at the top and I said, well, we're off to a good start. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, you've got Holy Bible at the top. I said, oh, look out, here's trouble. We've got something underneath that. The Book of Mormon. Oh. And what have we got under there? Doctrine and teaching. Oh. And then we got something else at the bottom. It had uh, the pearl of great price. And I said, well, I was sort of like, you know, those antique shows on TV where they call in the specialist and let them know if it's any value. And I said, well, what you got here, young man, is poison. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Looks lovely, doesn't it? Looks a bit better than my Bible. Hey? Huh? Looks a lot better than my Bible. I can tell you now. Looks a lot better than that old girl. Hey? Huh? He I said, oh, what would you like me to do with it? There's like a rat's been gnawing on that. I've just been nibbling. <laughs> I said, what would you like me to do with this piece? Put it in the bin over there or are you going to do that? He said, oh, no, no. 
And then I told him about the whore. I said, hey, you know, you, you see these prostitutes look very nice, don't they? Oh, very inviting. You know, got every, all the, all the uh, right things in the right place and all the swerves. And I said, let me tell you a little story. I said there was a young man, he came across a young lady, she looked so beautiful. He couldn't help himself and everything looked so wonderful. And he lay with that woman and he contracted AIDS. Because you can't see AIDS. And I said, and he died and went to hell. I said, that's no better than that book there. I said, you feed on that, you're going to die and go to hell. Because it's false doctrine. I said, it shows you the people that gave you the book prostitute their heart. They're of the children of the harlot. The mother of harlots. The Roman Catholic system. And she has daughters. The Mormon church is one of them. I said, see the variety there? I said, listen, what you need is a book that says Holy Bible. Full stop. And then I'll give you an amen. But you ain't got Holy Bible. you got Holy Bible, the Book of Mormon. You've got doctrine and teaching of the Mormon religion. And then underneath that, you have who they say the pearl of great price is. Put it in the bin. Oh, and I can't. It looks too beautiful. Bit hard to resist, isn't it? But remember, as I walked away, I remember the whore had AIDS. And she was beautiful. She was no mud fence, I can tell you. She was no plain Jane. She had all the right curves in all the right places. Someone say amen. amen. They don't know. See the ignorance? Ignorance. They judge by sight. Not with hearing, but by sight. Oh, it looks lovely. Looks lovely. Right? Pizzas look lovely too, but they can kill you as well if you eat too many. And so can chocolate. Chocolate has that Eden thing about it, doesn't it? It tastes good. And it looks good. But it can kill you if you're not in control. We know about what's going on down at Dreamworld. Apparently there was four deaths and... I mean, the conspiracy theories say that they never even happened. They reckon it's just money raising. There was no doubt. That's, I have a guy that sends me some conspiracy stuff. What the Masonic Lodge is doing and their symbolic things and colours. and oh, I, I don't bother myself with it. I don't bother myself with what the devil is doing. I just get on with what the Lord told me to do and it just bulldozes straight through the middle of the Masonic Lodge, the Mormons, the Morons, the JWs, the Roman Catholic Hall, the whole lot. I just go straight through the middle and on the front of my blade, on my bulldozer, is Jesus. Jesus is written. And I just... <laughs> like a German tank going through town. You know what I mean? So... Leopard tank. A Buddhist monk travelled from Melbourne to, to Dream World to pray. This is ignorance. See, we're dealing with ignorance, aren't we, in our series. To pray and wish. Pray and wish for the dead. That the dead might go to the right place. Might go to the right place. Gee, that's a real broadie, isn't it? That's a broadsider. On Broadway, on Broadway, 
You can hear your religion in the air. You can live in all kinds of sin. You don't have to repent with them all oh, if you just get down there on the Broadway. The old Buddhist, eh? Buddhist monk, what a waste of travel. Rolled up in the orange gown, praying, and he came up to pray and wish. Couldn't he do that where he won? Why would you pray for the dead? The dead are dead. And you ain't going to help the dead. That's why we preach in this church, repent now, because the dead can't repent. You better sort it out now and stay off Broadway. I'm Broadway. I'd love to go to Broadway and preach the narrow message, you know. <laughs> Who knows? Father willing. Be there on Broadway. I'm Broadway. Da 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 da. Dee, da, dee. Four year old girls now having their parties. Four year old girls. Think about it. I remember when my daughter was four. Four year old girls now wanting manicures, pedicures, and pampering at adult salons for their birthday. I mean, what is the world turning into? I, I say uh, the world is becoming a place where the wrath of God is going to be unleashed. God has a cup of indignation, of anger. It's filling up by the day. Hey? 158 people die every year of domestic violence. Why? Let me tell you why. Because they don't have the Prince of Peace in their house. When the Prince of Peace is in the house, there will be no violence. Because that's not his way. His way is the way of agape love and kindness, joy. The way of the Lord is righteousness, the doing the right thing. Righteousness, joy and peace by the power of the Holy Ghost. There can be no right way of living and no joy and certainly no peace unless we let the Holy Ghost lead. That's the key. The Spirit of God. The Comforter. Even though you're being done wrong, even though things aren't fair, it's just not fair. The Holy Ghost is the Comforter. It's just not fair. I think Jesus could have said that. I, hanging on the tree. Oh, it's just not fair, Father. You know, like, what have I done wrong? I haven't done anything wrong. We like to say that, don't we? I haven't done... Remember next time you've done wrong and you haven't done any wrong, remember that you're blessed. Because blessed and blessed are those who are persecuted and treated wrongly and they've done nothing wrong. Come on. Blessed are those. The Roman Catholic television mass this morning. What a mess. One lady, young lady, got into the podium and read from, I've never heard of this book in the Bible, the Book of Wisdom. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. And she said, Oh God, you overlook people's sin." so they may repent. <laughs> Something doesn't add up there. You, oh God, you overlook people's sins so that they may repent. 
Duh. Something not right. It's confusing, isn't it? It's like Confucius, you know? And be a whack. Not good. Don't understand. Please. Don't say things like that. Let's go into the message today. We're going to be reading out of the book of Revelation. The last book in the book. Revelation chapter 19. Brother Shadrach. Brother Shadrach? Yes. Glory to the Lamb. Lamb of God. Thank you, brother. Revelation chapter 19. And we're going to start reading in verse 1. After these things, I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honour and power belong to the Lord our God. Verse 2, for true and righteous are his judgments because he has judged the great harlot who corrupted the earth and with her fornication and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants shed by her. Again, verse 3, they said, Alleluia, her smoke rises up forever and ever and the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who sat on the throne, saying, Amen. Alleluia. Revelation 19, 5. Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. Verse 6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Verse 7, Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. Verse 8, And... To her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean, bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Verse 9, Revelation 19. Then he said to me, Write, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. And those who have Jesus have, have his spirit as we just read. And when the spirit is in you, the Holy Spirit, you will proclaim and prophesy means preach. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And those who have Jesus, this is testifying that we have Jesus. It's not good enough to have Jesus and not be preaching in one manner or another or proclaiming or telling the people or prophesying. Telling the people of Jesus. When you have something, as human beings, we like to tell everyone, don't we? I won the lotto. Six million. 
and you tell everyone, well, some wouldn't because they don't want anyone knock on their door. You know? <laughs> they don't want the relatives to know. Because <laughs> they're greedy. That's why they bought the tickets to start with. Because they're greedy. It's about them. Oh, I just buy them so I can, you know, win the lot and give all the money away to my relatives. Yeah, sure. You lying thing. You will burn. The liar will burn in the fire of hell. And everybody said, Amen. So we've been looking at uh, the confrontation series. We're around about the 35th message in the series. 35th, 36th message of confronting things in this world as we travel through this world, confronting things head on in a Christ-like manner. Christos confrontation. And the last few weeks we dealt with the I in the word confrontation. In the last three letters now, I-O-N. And we said that ignorance, in our last three weeks, ignorance cannot save, ignorance is hell. Ignorance is a darkened mind. And this morning, once again, we've seen how darkened the minds are of humanity in the earth, regardless of their religious take or desires. Buddhas coming up to pray for dead people and wish that they go to the right place. Not the place, but the right place. What's the right place? Where would you want your family to go? Where do you want to go? Where do you want your mother to go when she dies? Do you want her to go to heaven or do you want her to go to hell? Where do you want your, your children to go? To heaven or hell? I better start telling them about heaven and hell if you want them to go to heaven. Hey? We best to tell our relatives and our family and ourselves every day. Confront ourselves first. Then we can confront every issue that comes into our life by the power of God. We're not gonna we're not gonna deal with it. We're never gonna have closure. I knew I would never have closure as an alcoholic, as a, a, a person that was bound by alcohol, I would never ever have closure going to Alcoholics Anonymous because they don't want to put the axe to the root. They don't want to admit the truth. They want to stay in ignorance and have people getting up and standing up in front of me and say, my name's Bill Brown and I'm an alcoholic. Lie. You're not an alcoholic. You're a person that is overtaken by alcohol. God don't make alcoholics. God don't make prostitutes. God don't make thieves. God made us in his image. So we need to say, my name is Bill Brown and I'm a sinner. Now we're starting to put the axe to the root. And I need to repent now. Because I don't know if I've got tomorrow. That's been my message all week. On the street. Death. I've been preaching about death. I've been preaching that the day of death comes suddenly. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 12. Like a snare on a bird. Like a net on a fish, the day of death comes suddenly. And we seen the four people die, well, supposedly, die at dream world. And we seen another man, a bus driver, die suddenly, didn't he? The Indian man. He was a singer too. He was of the Sikh, Sikh, Sikh people. Everyone was very crying and all that sort of thing because he's now dead. Did he know Jesus? Did he know the Prince of Peace? Did the people mourning and, and missing him now, did they know the Prince of Peace? Because if they don't, they're going to be very have a lot of pain until they get to know the Prince of Peace because he takes the pain away. When my mother died, there was no pain. I was just rejoicing because I led her to Jesus and, and she accepted the error of her way that she was a sinner 
and she asked forgiveness and she accepted it and gloried in what God done in my life she said it's a miracle what God has done in your life Paul absolute miracle because I was drunk eight days a week drugged out of my brain nine days a week chain smoking mouth like a sewer concentration level of minus three Hey, brain of a small bird come on and the Lord hey delivered me and delivered her when my brother died no problem there was no I didn't even go to my mother's funeral <laughs> isn't, isn't a funeral a send off oh I know I'm going to see my mother again hey I know the circle will not be broken. I know that. So why go to the funeral? She just moved into the next room. Just went to the next level. Glory. Because I believe. I believe what the Bible says. I believe the Lord. So our message today, we now move into the O in confrontation. C -c 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 confrontation. I O N O is for Lord God Omnipotent. Come on. Lord God Omnipotent. That's who we serve. Let's read it. Revelation 19 6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude as the sound. Revelation 19, 6, as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thunderings. This was a voice. Alleluia. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. I think that when saying this, this angel might have been a cockney. You know what I mean? He didn't say hallelujah. He said alleluia. <laughs> You know, he's sort of cutting everything short, you know, like the Cockneys do. Hallelujah! He might have been a Cockney angel, you know what I mean? No. Hallelujah! Because the Lord, he's God, he's omnipotent, all-powerful, reigns. <laughs> when the money ain't in the bank. When you just got the sack. Yeah, lost your job. The wife walks out. The husband walks out. Your mates turn on you like serpents. Remember, Revelation 19 says, The Lord God omnipotent reigns. <laughs> and that will just, the waters will subside. The peace will come. Hang on a minute. Just hang on there a minute. And the old devil's coming in like a flood with the fear and the envy and the vengeance and the, and the hatred and it's all screwing your face up. And you, and then you hear, Hallelujah! The Lord God of living it right! Woo! And then you hear again. Well, if you just put your hand in mine, you're gonna leave all your troubles behind. Keep on walking. Don't look back. Look back. Don't look back. That's what Jesus wants. That's what Jesus is saying today. Put your hand in mine, and you'll leave all your troubles behind. Keep on walking. Don't look back. Look back. Don't look back. That's where it's at. As simple as it is, people aren't doing it. They're not walking with Jesus. They know about Jesus. They've heard about Jesus. They might even read about Jesus. They might even know him. And we know that there's been various and many cases where people knew God. But they forgot about him. They forgot about his power. They forgot about his omniness. Eh? Omni means all. P 
Potent means power. He's Lord. He's God. He's omni. Potent. And he reigns. Is that enough? Can you show me another God of that category? With those credentials? <laughs> Not one. Not one. And the scriptures read in Revelation 19. Tell of a message today, Lord God omnipotent. Revelation 19, 1. After these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honour and power belong to the Lord. I like the last bit. It's very good for the JWs, the Jehovah Witnesses, all numbered together. Salvation, glory, honour, power belong to the Lord our God. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. He's known as the Saviour. We know in Hebrews it also says salvation belongs to the Lord. It don't belong to anyone else. It don't belong to Allah, it, the moon god. It don't belong to Mary. It don't belong to the Roman Catholic system and business. It doesn't belong to any religion. It belongs to Jesus. He is the saviour of the world. Salvation and glory. John. Let's go to the writings of John. 16. We'll just confirm this. Get this right. So that we can go out fully assured and fully equipped. John 16. John 16. Remember this was going on in, in, in heaven. Revelation 19, 1. All these things I heard, after these things I heard, a loud voice of a great multitude in heaven. This is not a man saying this. Alleluia. Salvation, glory, honour, power belong to the Lord our God. John 16, verse 13. However, when he, Jesus, is speaking here, however, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Verse 40, John 16, he will glorify me. That's what's going on in Revelation 19, 1. He will glorify me, for he will take up what is mine and declare it to you. All things that Father has are mine. Therefore I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. Jesus is God. Make sure of that. Jesus is Lord, God, omnipotent, and he reigns. Jesus is reigns and reigned over sin and everything that would be in front of us, behind us and amongst us today. He reigns. Our Lord reigns. He has accomplished it all for us. We need to say, Alleluia. We need 
Alleluia means praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right? The title of our message today, Lord God, omnipotent, all-powerful. If you can't deal with and confront what you have in your life, whether it be situation or person, self, family, workplace, emotions. If you can't deal with it, with the Lord God omnipotent who reigns on your side, I don't believe you want to. I don't believe you want to deal with it. We can do all things through Christ, Lord God, omnipotent, omnipotent, all-powerful, reigns. Revelation 19. Salvation belongs to him. Glory, honour and power. We just read it in, in John 16. The glory belongs to Jesus. Let me go back there. It's not tedious for me to say the same thing. John 16, 14. He will, the Holy Ghost will glorify me. Not the Father. Like the Jehovah Witnesses and the Roman Catholics. It's all Father. Our Almighty Father. Creator of heaven and earth. And then they stitch on, and the Lord Jesus. There's a gap there, and the Lord Jesus. As if Jesus is somewhat uh, inferior to Father. No, no. One God, three identities. Jesus said, I go home to Father. I go home to Father. I will send another. He is the paraclete. And when the Spirit is in you and me, we glorify Jesus. Praise the Lord. Alleluia. Lord God, omnipotent, all-powerful. Each time I got a revelation and I realised what I was reading, I went free. Free. Free from the booze. Free from the nicotine. Free from the bad language. Free from the bad attitude. Free from my obsession to have to have people like me. Free from expectations of the world. Free from the expectations of religions. Free from the expectation of the devil. Free. Free. Set me free. Jesus come to set the captive free. Not half free. And then you start to soar like the eagle. Hey? When you put your hand in the hand of the man who's still the water. You're going to leave all your trouble behind. Keep on walking. Don't look back. Look back. Don't look back. You're just going to walk on. Well, if you just put your hand in mine, you're going to leave all your trouble behind. It's all going to go back, way back to birth of birth. <laughs> it's all going to go back. You will be the new vehicle in town. <laughs> Woo! There's a new vehicle on the road. Brand new. There's a new creature in town. Not a reformed drunk. Reformed junkie. Right? Because reformed drunks and reformed junkies are still bothered about their form. Yeah. Oh, how will the boys see me, you know? Al Jonesy and them see me. You know? They're worried about their form. The way what people think. 
instead of what the Lord said. Revelation 19. Lord God omnipotent. That's my God. That's my God. I'm not settling for some statue of an obese man called Buddha. I'm not settling for that. It, that's no good to me. A piece of stone. I might as well worship a pie. I'm not going to settle for that. I, 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 I'm not going to settle for conspiracy theories. I, I need the great theologian. I, I, I need God's logic on all things daily so I may be not just a conqueror and an overcomer, but more. You will be more than overcomers. You will be leading a, a, a more than an overcomer is someone who's overcome and now they're leading others to overcome so they can lead others to overcome. Revelation 19. We're heading down another series. Oh, dear. An O series. The big O. Holy the lonely body. Know the way I feel tonight. Revelation 19 to For true. Oh, I'm going to start weeping with joy in a minute. For true and righteous are his teachings. Oh. Come on. True and righteous are his judgments because he has judged the Roman Catholic Church who corrupted the earth with, his, with her false teaching and he has avenged on the Roman Catholic system the blood of his servants, the saints, who shed their blood. He is the avenger. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. True and righteous are his judgment. Is that enough for you? You've been done wrong. Someone's done you wrong. You think, hang on a minute, the Lord God omnipotent hasn't finished with this situation. He is true. And righteous in the way he deals with things. Are you in right standing with him? That's the question. Are you in right standing with the Lord God omnipotent? All powerful. That's the kicker. That is the, the center point. Because the eyes of the Lord go to and fro across the earth. Looking... For the righteous, that he may show himself strong on their behalf. And the assembly said, Amen. Hallelujah. One said, Hallelujah. I'm going to say, Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. Then we're all whinging and navel gazing. Oh, if only my life. Oh, what has happened to me? Oh, where's this Jesus? Where is he now? I don't want to forsake my sin, but I want Jesus to be my lapdog. My sugar daddy Jesus. Oh, where's the ATM Jesus now? He's not going to help me out. He's going to let you go down, down, deeper and down with status quo. And that is the status quo, isn't it? Down, down, deeper and down. All the way to hell. Unless we repent and start glorifying the one true God. And it ain't Buddha. And it ain't Mary. And it ain't the Pope. And it ain't Elvis. And it ain't me. And it ain't you. And it ain't anything on this earth. It is Jesus who's seated on the throne. Alleluia! Lord God omnipotent reigns. That's what he's waiting for. 
is waiting for us to acknowledge that. And whether we do or not, it doesn't matter because the day is coming. The scriptures are clear, every knee will bow and every tongue will, will confess that Jesus is Lord. The day will come. Whether you bow your knee today, whether you bow your knee in hell, whether you bow your knee in heaven, you will bow your knee. And you will say, Jesus is Lord God omnipotent. <laughs> Hallelujah. He reigns upon the throne. True and righteous. Other scriptures call him faithful and true. Let's read it. Revelation 19. Verse 11. Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse. And he who sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he judges and makes war. You see that? The whole chapter is about Jesus. The whole chapter. Revelation 90. It's all glorifying Jesus. Because it's the Spirit. The Holy Ghost, who gives witness to Jesus always. He don't give witness to no one else. Because he said so. Through Jesus. In John 16, 13 and 14. He will speak of me. He, he, he will glorify me. He will glorify me. No one else will get a dot of glorification. Revelation 19, 11. Now I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he who sat on him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Listen to me. Do you ever see these religions, Roman Catholicism, Jehovah Witnesses, do you ever see them uh, painting pictures of Jesus with eyes of fire and a face like lightning on a white horse ready to make war on the plain of Armageddon? No. Because they have another Jesus. They have some milky-skinned Gay looking Jesus who accepts everyone. Some weak little floral piece, you know, sitting there with Jesus looking like he's anemic. Not looking like he's got eyes of fire and a face like lightning ready to judge and make war and destroy. And to tear to pieces. And to rule with a rod of iron. Revelation 19. Where did you get this from? Ruling with a rod of iron. <clears throat> Verse 12, Revelation 19. His eyes were like a flame of fire and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. That's us. That's us. Fine linen on white horses heading to the plain of Megiddo for the war of wars where righteousness and holiness confronts evil. Verse 5, 15 I should say, Revelation 19, 15, Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that with it he should strike the nations and he himself will rule the nations with a rod of iron. 
He himself treads out the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of Almighty God. Fierce now of the Almighty God. Verse 16, Revelation 19, he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King, King. This is Jesus. King over every king. Lord over every Lord. Is Jesus God? Is he God? Of course he is. Of course he is God. Of course he is God. He is King and God. He is Lord. He is omnipotent. He is all powerful. Revelation 19. Verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come. And his wife has made herself ready. Are we making ourselves ready? Are we ready to marry the Lamb? How's our walk? How's our heart? We must make ourselves ready. We must get ready now. No expenses spared. It's like a woman marrying a man. The hypothetical, the, the symbolic look. When the woman marries the man, she don't want to spare any expenses, although the husband might be a bit of a tight wad and he says, oh, we don't need that. Let's just get a flag and, and go down to the creek. Everything's good. I've got a sherbet ring here, plastic one. Put that on. Why not? When I got married, I used a washer. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I got married in a third world country and our marriage was $50 that I never had. Think about it. Don't want to misuse ministry funds now, do we? <laughs> but I know marriages at that same time cost $50,000 and now they're divorced. But me, 20 years later, hello, still going on beautifully. Hey? And I'm still preparing every day. And she's still preparing every day to meet her real husband, Jesus, the Christ. The scriptures read very clearly. And his wife has made herself ready. Are we ready? We just came back from Las Vegas and that was our message in Las Vegas. Would you like to come to the wedding supper of the Lamb? Well, there is a preparation. You have to get ready. We need to get things to be done. There's gowns to be washed. There's even a new gown. There's things that have to be prepared. You must prepare your heart. We must be found worthy when he comes. Not just, oh yeah, I know about Jesus. Oh yeah, I've read the Bible 14 times. Do you do what it says? No. I'm saved. Uh, next. Revelation 19, 18, to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean, clean, bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. We just read about the linen, didn't we? The armies in heaven, the linen, the linen, fine, clean, bright, radiant, Holy wisdom makes a man's face shine, radiant, 
makes a man's face bright. The fear of God is the beginning of brightness. Not dull, debased, moronic, bright, fine, clean. Our message today, Lord God, omnipotent, all-powerful, don't whinge. I can't do it. I don't think I can do it. You're not asked to do it. Because our life is but vapour. Man at his best is vapour. You get the best of the best, they're vapour. What's on the outside, you know, of a Coke bottle, vapour. Have a look at yourself sometime when you get a cold drink in the summer and see all that vapour on the outside there. That's you. You're looking at yourself in the eyes of God. Man at his best. That cuts off, you know, trims back a bit of the uh, the proud fat, doesn't it? Slices off a bit there on the kill floor of the Christ. Glory, hallelujah. Hey, sort of brings us in the line of it, doesn't it? You know, spare the rod, spoil the child. The child will just run rampant, just do what he wants. you got to get that rod out. Bring him into line. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? That's not allowed today. Not allowed to raise your voice. They say you're the devil. If you're yelling, that's the devil. No, it's not. No, 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 no. You're the devil. The devil wasn't yelling in Eden. He was talking to the woman. Hello Eve, how are you today? <laughs> ah, you look very nice. Did you know that there's another way? <laughs> if you know what I mean, Eve. <laughs> and that husband of yours, he's just a little puppy dog, he gonna follow on anyway. <laughs> you know you rule the roost, baby. No, no, the devil don't yell. You show me where the devil yelled at anyone in the Bible. I'll, I'll, I'll stop yelling. Ha! Glory! Woo! Jesus! Son of David! Put the trumpet to thy mouth. The word of God is clear. Put the trumpet to thy mouth. And make sure it's not uncertain. Make sure it's very clear. The only certain and sure thing in the world today is this word I got in my hand. No, no, I don't have a holy Bible and underneath it's got the Book of Mormon and then doctrine and teaching of the Book of Mormon and then underneath that it says on the spine the great, pearl of great price. No, get that book and put it in the bin with all the Roman Catholic doctrines and, and their catechism. Put it in the bin with the rosary beads and the scapulars and all the rest of the stuff where they crucify themselves daily and the crosses with Jesus hanging on it. Jesus ain't on a cross! You're mocking him! He's on the throne. Lord God omnipotent. <laughs> I'm going home to Father. <laughs> Don't mock him. Don't blaspheme the Lord. I have in my hand an Anglo magazine periodical from the Anglican Church. The focus. I tell you, these people are blind. Look at that beautiful presentation there. It looks lovely, wouldn't it? Sure, it sort of reminds you of the harlot with AIDS, you know. Looks so beautiful, didn't she? But she had AIDS. All these fornications in him. And abuse of the name of Jesus. Not one scripture in the magazine. It tells you what they're about. Especially when they read the book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 4. 
the true ministers, they're not about this. They're not about this world. They're about prayer and the word of God. Everybody said. Amen. So here we have the right reverend Bishop Alison Tyler. Let's give her a hand. Come on, everybody. Come on, that right. Come on, let's hear it. Yeah. The right reverend Bishop Alison Tyler. There she is with the collar back the front. You beauty, Alison. Bishop Allison encouraged conversation about holiness. Anglo, this is worse than you think. It's not just Anglican, it's Anglo-Catholic. So this is the twisted sister there too. Anglo-Catholics need to recover their confidence in speaking about holiness. According to the Right Reverend Allison, the Right Reverend Bishop, Alice and Tyler. Let's give her a hand. Come on. A couple of generations ago, ugh, Anglo Catholics would have added to the conference by saying of the daily office that attendance at the Eucharist at least once a week was needed. Also, regular private confession. The observance of the church's feast and fasts and a real and practical concern for the poor. So, well, we know the Eucharist is satanic. We know that. Anyone that knows anything about Jesus and the Bible knows the Eucharistic teaching is satanic. If you want to talk about the Eucharist, you talk to Sister Sue. Keely over here, she knows all about that Roman Catholic stuff. She was one of the best Roman Catholic sinners in Brisbane, I tell you. She knows all about She done a lot of studies on all this stuff, and more than I ever did, you know. So you go and talk to her about Roman Catholicism and she'll put you straight. It's from the pit. As the Bible says very clearly in the chapter we're reading, the great harlot. Now, where was I? Regular private confession. So there's a, a serial sin thing going on. It's just soul to understand, isn't it? There's no going free. It's a regular private confession set up. Right? The sins just keep on keeping on like warp and muir. The observation of the church feast and fast. We dealt with that in Galatians chapter 4, 8 to 11. We don't go back to that. We don't go back to those religious things. We're free. We walk in the spirit now. We don't have that in the true church feast and fast. Where's that? Where's that in the true church? Read Galatians 4, 8 to 11. Now, the, the Anglican magazine itself. Construction is to begin on Anglicare's $25 million new home. Well, you know what? Let me just say this. They want to start looking after how they care for people before they go building another building for Anglicare. Because they came to look after my mum before she died and they never done anything. They just made themselves a cup of tea, ate the biscuits and went. They never bathed my mother and they never gave her the pills. My sister would come home from work and she'd find the pills under the bed. Obviously where my mother was lying in bed, scraping round, trying to find the pills and they'd fallen on the floor and rolled under the bed. And now they're building another. They're in a, I'm in the money, I'm in the money. Da, 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 dee, 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 another $25 million building coming up. I'm in the money. I'm in the money. And to finish it off, there had been reports. Bad mouth texting at the Anglican College in Springfield. Immoral, degrading texting amongst the... Anglican school children and my niece police officer K 
Constable Annette Shaw. She went there to speak from the Queensland Police Force. And she ain't even saved. But she went to the Anglican College to do a, a speech on immoral texting and sexting and, and degrading photos going around the school. Now you think about it. Holiness. Come on, look, it's never going to be. You're never going to be clean. You're never going to be bright. You're never going to be wearing fine linen. You're never going to know holiness if you don't turn to Jesus, Lord God, omnipotent, because he's the one that reigned over all that stuff for us at the tree. And everybody said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. So, Revelation 19, let's go there. Verse 2, Revelation 19, for true and righteous are his judgment because he has judged the great harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, who corrupted the earth with her fornication, her false teaching and pedophilia. And he has avenged on her the blood of his servants that was shed by her. Verse 3, again they say, Alleluia! Praise the Lord! Her smoke rises up forever and ever. Will burn forever and ever. Those of the harlot church will burn and the smoke in the abyss will rise forever and ever. Never ending. They'll burn and burn and burn. Verse 4, And the 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God who sat on the throne saying, Amen! Alleluia! Living creatures around the throne. 24 elders and the four living creatures. And these creatures are just blow your mind. The power and the fierceness of these creatures. Transformers and, and, and the Pacific Rim and all that is just peanut shells. That's just baby food compared to these, these creatures that are around the throne of God. Awesome creatures. Crying out, Alleluia, Amen. Verse 5, then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God. All you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. You see that? So the servants of the Lord are not just bogans with no money. There's great people too that follow the Lord. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. Believe it or not, I'm walking on air. The omnipotent God. Praise our God, all ye servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place and bless the Lord, and bless the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, who stand by night in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the holy place. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye servants, all you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. Hey? Let us be glad and rejoice. And give him glory. Don't you think he deserves glory for doing everything for us? 
giving us life and breath and all things. Hey? I wonder about people that go to church and don't rejoice. I don't know if they're just petrified or just brain dead. I don't know. <laughs> I might be just subhuman or something. <laughs> Religious retards. Let us be glad! Ah! And rejoice! How can you not? Knowing you got the victory and the battle hasn't even faced you yet. Head on. And we've already got it in the bag. Like King David. He said to the giant, The Lord has put you in my hand today. See that? Believe the Lord. And all his brothers, Eliab and all them were great big men of muscle and biceps and triceps. And here's little David with his sling. And the Lord, oh, you're a bit off there today, David. He redirected it, bonk, popped him. Down he went. Like a bag of spuds at the market. Hey? All over Red Rover. Revelation 19. And the verse is 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hey? Do we have the testimony of Jesus? I tell you, Jesus the Christ Ministries says it all in just the name, doesn't it? Jesus the Christ Ministries. We testify Jesus. We don't testify anything or anyone else. We testify Jesus. We boast of Jesus. We proclaim Jesus. As the Lord, God, Omnipotent One, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We proclaim, kiss the King or he'll get angry. We proclaim that Jesus is the King of every King that ever lived. The Lord of every Lord that ever lived. There's no one greater than Jesus. How could you not promote him? Let's turn in our Bibles and finish up today in the writings of Luke 19. Just a little piece I want to read there in, in Luke 19. Luke 19. Verse 8, Zacchaeus, the little man Zacchaeus, up the tree and the Lord said, come down from the tree, I want to go to your house. Luke 19, 8, then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, look Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I want to restore it fourfold. You see that? Verse 9, Jesus said to Zacchaeus, Salvation has come to this house today because he also is the son of Abraham. For the son of man has come to seek and save that which was lost. What I see there is the Lord God. I see his all-powerful, power, the omnipotent power of God. There was nothing complicated. He just came into the presence of the Lord. The Lord came to his house. And when we come into the presence of the Lord, if our heart is right, we too will be totally transformed to another person. 
Zacchaeus was a thief. He was a hard line man. The people did not like him. He was a tax collector. And who likes to pay tax? And worse than that, he always, when he collected his tax, said, one for you and one for me. One for you. He was a rip-off. He was a crook. But look at the power of the Lord God, the all-powerful Saviour. Look at the power. Look, look what happened when Zacchaeus came into his presence. When we come into the Lord's presence. Surely we want to make a change. Surely we're going to say to Jesus, look, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. It's not of you. It's wrong. It, 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 it's false. It, it, it's against what you say. It's not what you, you, you teach, Jesus. I don't want to go that way. There's, there's, no, there's no female pastors. There's no female uh, um, leaders of churches in the Bible. I won't do it let alone a right reverend bishop. Paul wrote to Timothy that a pastor or a bishop must be the husband of one wife. How can that be? How can she be the husband of one wife? She can't be unless she's lesbian. She cannot be the husband. A woman can never be the husband. Of any man or any woman. A woman is a woman. Women are not called to lead. According to scripture, they are called to help. Their brilliance and their brightness and, and, and their, their, their blessing is revealed in their helping hand to their husband and the children. No other way can it be. So if we, let me finish by saying if we respect, if we fear the Lord God omnipotent who reigns, he, he is reigning. It doesn't look like he's reigning. Looks like the devil's having a heyday, doesn't it? Oh no, he's reigning. Jesus is reigning. <laughs> he, he is on the throne. Jesus is not on a cross. Jesus is not in a building. Jesus is on the throne and in the hearts of the saints, the bona fide saints. Let's not degrade the Lord, Brother Glenn. Let's not degrade the Lord. Let's, let, let's not put him down to be just a mere man or a good teacher. Hey? Or someone who is uh, inferior to Father. No, 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 no. The three are one. Worship God. And everything will pan out for you. Everything will work out more beautiful than you could ever imagine. And everybody in the house said, follow the message today. Lord God, omnipotent, all-powerful. He reigns. So when the trouble comes tomorrow, and the next day and the next day, and the Lord told us we will have trouble tomorrow. We've already been told in the scriptures. Don't worry about tomorrow because it has its own troubles. And when it comes, know that it's already been sorted. You just have to look to the Lord. He's already got it in the bag. You just got to say, where's the bag, Jesus? <laughs> and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.